Okay, um, thank you, uh, Wilson. Um, good uh, early afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Florian Ponat, and I am representing Attocube. Um, I want to say we are very happy to be a sponsor of this conference, and I want to thank the organizers for this opportunity to give a short presentation. Let's start with a quick overview over our company. Um, so Attacube was founded in 2001 um, by scientists from the uh, Center for Nanoscience at the LMU in Munich. Um, today uh, we have offices um, in uh, Munich, obviously our headquarters, as well as two um, uh, sales representations in the uh, United States. And we uh, rely on a uh, vast uh, uh, or large uh, network of uh, distributors in Asia as well as here in South America. Um, since 2001, the company grew um, from a few to over 19 emplo 90 employees, um, many of which have scientific uh, backgrounds um, and uh, PhDs. And here uh, on the right, you just uh, see a list of uh, basically continuous um, uh, awards that we receive, not only for advances in technology, but also achievements in business, which shows that our company is uh, quite, um, oops, is, uh, uh, quite uh, innovative and um, dynamic. Um, today, Adacube has more than 1,500 customers in over uh, 40 countries. Um, and here, this is a selection of uh, some customers um, uh, at uh, very uh, renowned and uh, leading scientific and um, uh, research I um, institutes and um, sorry um, and uh, high tech companies. Um, but what really drives us is our uh, mission, which is um, to provide um, scientists with uh, sophisticated tools, which enable them to do one thing, and that is. Uh, create scientific impact. So again, here you see a, a list or a selection of recent publications by our customers. Um, and just as a quick um, uh, side note, so if you are a customer and your publication is not on our list or on our radar, please uh, uh, notify us. Um, moving on, so let's, uh, give me, uh, let me uh, give you a quick uh, summary over uh, the, the product uh, portfolio that Adicube uh, offers. So um, basically, uh, we have um, low uh, or close or dry measurement systems, which are com uh, combined of uh, low vibration cryostats as well as uh, scanning probe microscope inserts. And then we also offer um, nano positioning stages and scanners uh, along with controllers as well as uh, fiber based interferometric systems. Um, the remainder of this presentation will focus on the top, so on the um, after dry lab concept. So let's start with the question, why go dry? Um, so we know um, that um, helium is a scarce resource, which uh, already uh, significantly impacts uh, the scientific research today. And down the line, it will uh, even get worse and therefore also impact other uh, aspects of our lives um, even more. Um, and the second uh, uh, answer to the question why go dry in our eyes is uh, cost. So um, if you think about the continuous uh, costs of operating a liquid cryostat, um, obviously they are um, uh, continuing as well as increasing because of the scarcity of uh, the helium. So um, we think that you know, uh, the initial, um, uh, initial costs of a dry system are well justified over a rather short period of time. But uh, a critical question is obviously, um, is uh, scanning probe microscopy possible in dry cryostats? So um, we know that uh, pulse tube coolers have vibration levels in the tens of uh, micron um, range. Uh, yet uh, for low temperature um, uh, scanning probe microscopy, we are looking at resolutions of 10 to 20 nanometer laterally and um, you know, sub-resolution um, uh, in Z. So this uh, poses a, a design challenge to us. Um, which means we have to minimize the vibrations by mechanically decoupling the, between the pulse tube and the sample space, um, yet by enduring a high uh, sufficient cooling power by a good thermal contact between those two elements. Uh, and our approach to this uh, um, yeah, problem was a engineering uh, a good compromise. So we start out with our requirement for low vibrations. 
uh, and obviously uh, the system should be cry courage and free. Um, we envisioned a system that is easy to use, offers a large sample space, is affordable, um, fits into a regular lab, so it's, it's rather compact, uh, offers different magnetic fields, including vector magnets, and also uh, different base temperatures down to 1.5 Kelvin. Um, and this is our solution. So the Atto Dry um, is basically a series of top-loading, lo top um, low-vibration, closed-cycle cryostats. Uh, we offer different models, um, some with a base temperature of 4 Kelvin. Here's a manual-operated one, a fully automated one in the middle. And then our flagship here in front is the Atto Dry uh, 2100, which is uh, a 1.5 Kelvin system, fully automated. Um, to verify uh, that scanning probe microscopy is possible in such a cryostat, we have done um, yeah, characterization measurements uh, with uh, accelerometers inside the sample chamber. And um, yeah, you can see here uh, clearly uh, one thing that um, there is not a lot of difference uh, if the uh, cryo cooler is on or off. Um, that's number one. And number two, um, we know of this characteristic peak at 1.4 hertz uh, of the pulse tube cooler um, uh, and we also see here that this has been significantly reduced or insulated um, uh, by a um, yeah, three orders of magnitude if we remember the, the number I gave before. So um, uh, considering that uh, SPM is possible let's uh, look at the different SPMs that Adocube offers and in particular here what inserts uh, we offer for a magnetic force and um, a magnetic, ma magnetic imaging. Um, so here on the left, you see our dedicated AFM-MFM, cantilever-based. And on the right, it's a, a dedicated uh, scanning hall probe uh, microscope setup. I'm going to focus on the AFM-MFM. Um, traditionally, our microscopes um, are composed of uh, pizza positioning stages and scanning stages which scan the sample underneath a uh, fixed tip um, and are well engineered or engineered into a well-designed uh, titanium housing. Um, quite recently, we have uh, introduced uh, some new exciting features. Uh, one is that we have increased the scan range uh, from 30 times 30 microns to uh, 125 times 125 microns at low temperature. Um, and the other thing is that we have integrated, you can see it up here, um, our uh, fiber-based interferometric sensors into the microscope, which enables you to um, do linear uh, closed-loop scanning, um, which you see up here, if my laser pointer works, as well as um, you can uh, basically retrieve nano-sized features um, over the full uh, millimeter range that the positioning stages um, allow you to do with uh, this global um, sample coordinate system that has been introduced. Um, our low temperature uh, AFM MFM is compatible with commercially available uh, cantilevers, um, which can be uh, uh, basically uh, very quickly exchanged via a so called uh, alignment free cantilever holder, which you see up here. Um, and then we also offer uh, with the system a quick exchange sample holder, which uh, has electrical contacts in case you need it for contacting your sample. Uh, this here shows uh, what our uh, low temperature MFM basically can be used for uh, in terms of measurement techniques. So here we see um, uh, some uh, or an AFM measurement um, where we show some uh, atomic steps on uh, strontium titanate um, right here. Um, on the left uh, you see uh, MFM measurements um, basically to uh, characterize skirmions or do vortex imaging on the bottom here. And then here uh, you see a um, uh, measurement of uh, PRFM uh, on ultra-thin th film uh, samples. Uh, quickly, another um, uh, insert that I want to mention is a, um, a double rotator uh, insert, which we call ATO 3DR. So the idea here is basically that you uh, are able to rotate a sample via two piezo rotators um, in an arbitrary way inside a solenoid um, uh, magnet uh, rather than going with a vector magnet which is much more expensive. Uh, our s motto is so to say rotate the sample not the magnet. And uh, here you see it up close so that's the unit over there, uh, two rotators um, 
uh, on the last one sits a, um, a very um, uh, convenient uh, ceramic chip carrier, which is leadless. So you basically wire bond your sample, put it in. It's automatically already contacted via pogo pins. And then you know, insert the, the insert and, and cool down. So it's rather quick again to, to change samples. And then uh, some of you may ask, uh, why do you need two axes uh, inside the magnet? Well, that's a good question. Let's say uh, we have a sample here um, with um, basically nanowires, uh, you know, uh, oriented randomly on the substrate, and uh, we want to uh, measure the magnetoresistance of one individual nanowire. Um, we basically have to uh, be able to rotate uh, the nanowire um, with respect to the external magnetic field. And that's what this uh, ATO3DR is able to do. Uh, really quickly, the last uh, sl slides here. Um, uh, while the ATO um, dry series can go down to 1.5 Kelvin, we, uh, our microscope instruments are also um, uh, suitable for millikelvin um, uh, research. So what I want to show you here is two systems that we um, have just um, yeah, recently um, uh, yeah, successfully um, installed. Um, this one here is a uh, combined AFM uh, confocal microscope. So the AFM is uh, based on a tuning fork, fork driven, uh, which drives the Akiyama probe, which can be seen here in this picture down, down here. So the tuning fork comes in from the side, the objective on top, here's the sample. Uh, and all this was integrated into a um, uh, top-loading dilution refrigerator from Leiden Cryogenics. And uh, the other system um, that we have uh, just recently installed was a uh, tuning fork-based uh, AFM. So that's seen uh, here on this on this side here. Um, and that was integrated again in a top-loading uh, dry di uh, dill fridge from uh, Blue Force. And with this, I want to thank you for your uh, attention and encourage you to talk uh, to me uh, during lunch break or coffee uh, break if you have any questions or would like to discuss anything more in particular. Thank you. Uh, there it goes. Okay. Um, so I am in uh, our Brazilian office, which handles Latin America, um, here in Campinas, or in Campinas, rather, near the synchrotron. Um, so we have uh, quite a number of systems in the world. I'm sure most everyone here probably knows us um, from the squid systems and the uh, Dynacool and everything. Um, so in order to uh, be able to maintain the systems worldwide, we've had to open up offices um, around the world. Um, and here, um, all the basic, all the countries, we've, we have had offices opened up over the years. Um, so one of the important things, like as with um, Atacube, is that I think it's Sorry, it seems to be cutting out. Um, a lot of our uh, art of our employees, including our sales force, are uh, PhDs. Myself, um, I did uh, my PhD at Penn State um, with uh, Nitin Samarth um, in the Spintronics group, um, and uh, so you know that way the idea is that you know your the technical salesperson can, can actually have a, a an in depth discussion with the with the with the professors. Um, so just a brief history, um, we were founded in 1982, and then obviously we sort of took off with the, uh, with the growth of uh, high-TC superconductors. 
Um, and our particular office was founded in uh, 2011, um, and the newest office is in Singapore. Um, our office handles basically Mexico on down. Um, Brazil is uh, roughly half of the GDP of the market and almost half of the population. Um, but because of uh, historically the, the, the stronger research here, um, it's probably 80% of our sales. Um, most of the research done in Latin America um, is, is in Brazil. There's, there's some um, starting strongly in, in, in Argentina as well. I mean, sorry, Argentina has always been uh, very strong as well. Um, and th there were some problems with the economy um, that affected them, unfortunately. Um, but uh, they, they have a very strong program, especially in low temperature physics. Uh, but, for example, uh, Colombia and Chile, pr even uh, Peru, uh, Costa Rica, they're starting programs now. Um, so one of the things is, besides uh, our quantum design products, we also act as a distributor for several other companies. Um, for example, in, in our office, ourselves, uh, we distribute about 23 other companies, um, and one of them being Atticube. And so there's a, there's a wide range, basically, mostly focused on low temperature physics or, or magnetism, um, but we also do uh, distribute for sample growth um, some uh, biophysics companies. And so just to quickly go through, I'm sure you've, you've already, everyone already probably knows these, um, but just the, the, the principal systems that we have. Um, this is our flagship system, um, the MPMS-3, uh, uh, which has the squid. So it's about, uh, let's say, an order of magnitude uh, more sensitive uh, to the magnetic moment than uh, the Dynacool or the Evercool or the Versalab. Um, most of our systems, uh, the most of our newer systems, um, we have maybe 75 systems in Latin America, and I think more than half of them are liquid-based. Um, but most of the newer systems are, everyone is moving towards uh, dry systems. Um, so there is a, a uh, for example, an option for to have it as a dry system. Um, so here, um, very standard uh, Dynacool PPMS type options um, where you can do AC susceptibility. Um, there's an oven to go up to 1,000 Kelvin. Um, you can put a high pressure cell. Um, you can also do uh, some magneto optics in the system. Um, and finally, you can also do, you know, the, the standard AC resistance, Hall effect, um, IV measurements. And then uh, Dynacool, which is the, let's say, the, the um, there are two systems. So the evolution of the system went from uh, a PPMS to an Evercool 1 to an Evercool 2. Um, and then at the time, instead of making an Evercool 3, for example, um, because the Evercool 2 is basically just an update of the technology of the Evercool 1, um, they decided to sort of make a quantum leap in the technology and, and uh, make it much stronger um, overall. Um, so it, you can have it in a 9 or a 14 Tesla version. Um, so you can have, it's, it's more reliable, um, it's faster, um, and there are basically more options overall compared to, to other. So um, you can get to um, full field in less than eight minutes. The f uh, here's the field resolution. Uh, the system startup time is about 16 hours. Um, and obviously since it's a uh, closed cycle system, you'll need to uh, do maintenance every 20,000. So then we have the Evercool 2 and the classic uh, PPMS. Um, again, I'm trying to be in time. So, um, so yeah, so um, it comes with a 9 Tesla magnet. Um, again, um, this was, uh, it's a closed cycle system. So uh, finally, um, we have, which has been very popular in uh, Latin America because it's sort of um, an introductory model um, uh, in terms of cost um, and everything. 
um, we have the Versalab. Um, so the it doesn't get quite as low as the other systems, which go down um, below 2 Kelvin. Um, and obviously, it doesn't get as high fields um, because you're, it's a smaller system, including the, uh, the sample space and everything. Um, however, it is uh, very compact and more affordable than the other two. Um, and so it's, it's a good option, um, even in uh, many existing labs have um, added a Versalab. Um, uh, you know, to do sort of pre-characterization. So um, you can just see the, the basic specs, uh, 3 Tesla, um, 50 Kelvin. And oh, one second, um, I should mention um, one of the newer options is that we have um, have an optical table um, added on to the Versalab so that you can do magneto optical experiments um, with, the, with the sample. Um, and then, so here we're in Campinas near the synchrotron, about 10 minutes from the synchrotron. Um, and if you're ever visiting, please feel free to, to stop by. So, thank you. So.